So what is the best parasite test? That's going to depend a little bit on your unique medical situation, but for most North Americans, we can make a pretty good assessment of what the number one parasite test is for you. What this kind of comes down to is what is the range of parasites that a test can look for? What is a positive for a result mean? What is a negative for a test mean? How much does it cost and how convenient? So those are some factors you can look at. We want a positive to mean you have something and we want a negative to mean we're pretty sure you don't have something or we're absolutely sure. Knowing which parasite test is best for you, well that's going to help you save time, money, and get your burning health questions answered much more quickly and directly for less cost. All right, so now we're going to get into the fifth best parasite test, the colonoscopy and endoscopy. So the colonoscopy, they go up through your rear end, they have a fiber optic cable with a camera on it, and they're looking around our intestines and they're looking for things that indicate problems. So things like bleeding, ulcerative colitis, IBD, cancer, polyps, things of that nature. They can also technically find uh, some parasites, though I don't think it's the best test for that. Endoscopy is the same thing, except it goes in through your mouth. Now, as far as what a positive means, hey, if they see a worm, awesome, right? That You can rely on that. On the other hand, if you have a negative and they say, oh, we didn't find any parasites during this uh, procedure, that doesn't re really mean a whole lot because there could just be a whole mess of parasites that aren't visible with this type of method. I would consider a negative to not be very reliable. This procedure, as far as convenience goes, it isn't the most convenient. You have to do a uh, significant bowel prep and you often have to be under sedation at your doctor's office or you know in the surgical room in order to get this type of procedure done. So it is gonna have to be scheduled out in advance. It's not very convenient. You can't just do it on the fly. Another place where it isn't that great is the range of parasites. When you're looking through this fiber optic cable, or I should say when the doctor's looking through it, they're only able to see parasites that are visible to whatever magnification they have. You could technically see some very small worms, but really you're limited only to the larger worms. So we have a worm infection. Sometimes you can diagnose it by looking for worms, but other times you can look for the really, really microscopic eggs. These are advanced infections where the parasite is mature enough to begin laying eggs. And, you know, that's a really important part of its life cycle because if it doesn't do it, that's the end of the generation. As far as the price goes, it's like one to $2,000 here in Denver. Uh, that's going to vary a bit depending on where you are in the country. But it's not the cheapest procedure. All in all, I would say this is not a reliable test for diagnosing parasites. Uh, you can incidentally find some. So the doctor's looking for other stuff, they find it, awesome. But outside of that, I would not trust my health to this type of uh, parasite analysis. All right, so let's go on to the fourth best parasite test. So this is a saliva test. So what they're gonna do is, is you basically spit into you know, some sort of receptacle. You can do this at home and you ship it off to them and it'll tell you if you have any antibodies to any parasites. Let's say you, you're positive, okay? So they say, well, you're positive for this, this parasite. What does that mean? So just because you have antibodies doesn't mean you're presently battling an infection. This could be an infection that was handled years ago by your body, or it could be an infection that's happening right now. I am unaware of a super reliable way to tell by the antibody levels or even comparing antibody tests so positive is kind of like you've been exposed, I think is what you can say reliably. So it doesn't say if you have conquered this infection and are done with it, or if you're still battling it. In that regard, I don't think this is a reliable positive indicator. So I would say a negative doesn't mean that you're definitely negative for a parasite infection. That just comes down to how antibodies circulate in our saliva. They may not always be present, according to my research. And furthermore, if the range is kind of limited, you could have a parasite infection, but they don't test for that antibody, or that exact antibody isn't present in our saliva. I don't really trust the range of parasites you can find with this. You, you can check with the individual provider, but it doesn't seem to be that ex exhaustive to me. The range of parasites is really dependent on what their kit tests for. So if they're only looking for five parasites, then that's all it can ever come back with. And then a further limitation is, there's only one type of antibody that is present in your saliva. So that just is gonna limit the chances that you're gonna find antibodies for a parasite infection. And as far as the price goes, I'd put it around 200 bucks, give or take. It's often added on or thrown in with other testing. I would say that the saliva test is not something that I would rely on. This is not how I would look for parasites. Uh, there's just 
better options. The third best test would be the PCR DNA parasite analysis. So what this is, is they take a stool sample and then they feed it into a machine and the machine spits back, hey, we found this parasite at this level, you know, call it from zero to 100 or something like that. It's looking for strands of DNA that match their database that they have inside the machine. What a positive means for a DNA PCR test. When you're positive for a parasite, that means they found some DNA. And on the lower end of that spectrum, so let's say in the zero to 25% range, there's a, some chance that it can get over amplified. So my understanding is that this thing can over report very low infections. Next, uh, as far as the negative for this test goes, it's decent for those, that limited range of parasites that it can do analysis on that it has in its database. But if we're talking anything outside of that, so more towards like worms and stuff, which actually tend to be what people are most interested in, I, I just haven't seen a machine that analyzes uh, worm type infections really well. This is something you can do at your home. You can mail it, that's freaking rad. Don't have to waste time scheduling with the doctor and breaking up your schedule. The kind of biggest limitation of this test is just the range of parasites. For all the parasite stuff I've seen so far, it's like five to seven parasites, more towards five, that can be found with these types of machines. Uh, as far as the price goes, 500 bucks, give or take. They can definitely go higher than that, depending on the type of package or whatever it's in. I would say that it's promising technology and hopefully it'll evolve to the point where the larger parasites can be found, but I just haven't seen that yet. All right, so the second best parasite test would be the, the thin film blood parasite test. So this one, what they do is they can like prick your finger and then you, sl you slide the blood across the slide. They will look at that slide under a microscope with very powerful magnification. And they're gonna look for, you know, things like malaria, Babesia, and other kind of tropical type blood parasites. Um, some, sometimes people in the USA come back positive for these. As far as the accuracy goes, this is going to be a very accurate test to the degree that the technician is trained or the parasitologist. So if the person is well trained who's looking at the blood sample, yeah, that's going to be a reliable positive. If they're not well trained, then that's going to be less reliable. Uh, same with the negative. If they're really well trained, they're a parasitologist, they have a PhD, they love this stuff, yeah, if they say you're negative, I would be confident that I'm negative. For the most part, I would say the range of parasites is not great as far as where we live. Now, if you lived in sub-Saharan Africa, or if you're coming back traveling and you feel terrible and you have malaria symptoms, great test. Or if you have been exposed to Lyme's disease or suspect that, uh, the presence of the Babesia in your blood could be a sign of that, or it could be something that needs to be sorted out uh, in order to help someone recover from Lyme disease. That's kind of up to the physician uh, or the naturopath who they're working with. We actually offer a version of this test. You can have it shipped to your house, prick your finger, a little alcohol wipe beforehand, put the blood on the slide. You're gonna make that thin blood film slide. Then you're gonna pack it up, ship it to us. We're gonna analyze it. And then about a week later, give or take, we're gonna give you your results. You can get this from us for under $200. But again, I don't know if I'd put my resources there. I think I'd more head towards the number one test for most people most of the time. All right, and now we're finally to our best parasite test, and that's the ova and parasite test. So what this test does is you submit a fecal sample, hopefully multiple days worth spread apart, and they, they combine all, the, all those samples together. They put it in a centrifuge. They stain it. So there's better contrast when they're looking at it under a microscope. And then they put it on a slide and they're looking for little protozoans. They're looking for worm eggs and they're also looking for worms. When you have a positive, we send you a photo from the microscope and that photo is gonna show that specimen, that, that parasite that we found. We're looking at the egg that's associated with the worm. And believe it or not, but the eggs are distinctive enough that you can connect an egg to an exact species, so that's pretty cool. The technician is gonna give a judgment for, on, on a level of one to four, one being the lowest presence, two, three, four being the highest presence. So as far as a negative goes for the ovum parasite test, that's pretty reliable to the degree that your technician is well-trained. With certain preservation methods that our lab uses, you can actually do this at home from the comfort of your home. We have good preservation methods. You don't have to mess around with refrigeration. Just preserve it, leave it in the bathroom somewhere safe. You don't have to poop on demand. You don't have to only submit one sample. You can submit multiple samples 
And there's like a 1999 research paper showing that when you have one day of stool sample versus two, three, four days, the, the more you get, the more you seem to find. And that's just a, a tricky quirk of parasites. They're just not present every single BM. They're doing their thing, they're living their life cycle, and they're not always laying eggs, and they're not always present. So when you do more samples, it increases the likelihood of this. So that's one big advantage of um, the way we do this test, is we encourage people to take four days worth of samples separated. So it's a big commitment from you, but again, doesn't cost you any more to get those extra samples in there. You're going to have more reliability. The range of parasites on this is great. This one can go from small protozoan, little tiny, almost bacteria-like parasites, things like Gerardia, Cryptosporidium, Parvum, things like that. And it can even go up to tapeworms and Ascaris and roundworms and things like that. Short price is about $250. The OVA and parasite tests, that's just the gold, gold standard. That is the way you want to diagnose an infection. It just really crushes the other parasite tests for most people most of the time. All right, so that's what I have for you about the five most common parasite tests. Check out parasites.org. We have uh, more information there. You can find all my contact info, parasites.org. If you want to email me, just uh, hit me up or, or give me a call, and we'll take it from there. I'm Evan with uh, parasites.org, and thank you for listening today. And I'll catch you next time. Take care.